I still not, I mean, you started a while ago, you really obviously weren't sure if this is what you wanted to do, but do you still love what you're doing? Yeah, I, I definitely love it. When I was, uh, when I first started, I didn't love it because it was too hard, and I didn't know why. Why would, uh, why, why that career picked me? I didn't pick Boston. Boston picked me. And but I knew it was, it was the quickest way to make a million dollars legally, and and for me to be set. Cause I mean, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to college. So the the uh, that kind of world is hard. The corporate world is hard when you when you don't have that kind of high education. So it's going to be just too hard of a world. And, uh, and the army wouldn't accept me, and I couldn't get no job at uh, no Wendy's because I was too qualified. You know, I was like, man, I got to, <laughs> I got to, I got to have the box. I have to make this successful. So uh, now, I think now the the past the, the end of 2010, like around October, November. That's when I woke up and I actually loved it. I, I woke up and I was like, I love boxing because I understand it now. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the movements, the science of it. And then one day it just hit me. And, and every great and every great person knows, you know, just it just hits you. Mm -hmm. And when it, and when I woke up and I was like, man, I love boxing. And then I went and I sparred and I had a, a, a hell of a good day. I was like, I love boxing. From that point on, I love it. I love it. I love. I'm like a, I'm like a little kid. And see now, even though that even though I'm older than the majority of people, they've been doing it since they was at eight. They're 18. That's already been 10 years in the game. I'm I'm like a I'm like a little newborn kid. Like you know, it's great. It's fun. I'm like I get excited now. I'm like I can't wait to fight next time. Well, Brad, you've trained at several different gyms in the Denver metro area. Tell us about the gyms and what you learned from each one of them. Well, I started at 20th Street. That taught me the basics. That taught me what was important, what punches are important. You know, Mike Alvarado taught me a whole bunch. He taught me, he was my, uh, he was my little big brother. And, and, and when it came to the, when it came to the gym, and when it came to teaching me, he, he was my big brother. Even though he was only my big brother. But when we got out on the streets, it was the, the road reversed. And um, that's what I learned there. And then I went to, um, as soon as I went there, I went to, I went to Delgado's. But I, from Delgado's, I learned baby steps, you know, how to, how, to hold, how to hold my form a little bit. And then I went, I didn't stay there too long. Then I went to Sloan's Lake. Sloan's Lake taught me probably the most. It taught me how to be a, taught me how to be a man. It taught me, yeah, it taught me how to be a man, to be strong. Man, I've been to so many gyms, I forget. <laughs> which, which, which ones I Oh, wow. No, hold on. I went to, I went to 20th Street to, uh, I went to 20th Street because Cosmo brought me to 20th Street to, uh, to touch him up. I went to touch him up, and that's the barrel. And that's who taught me how to box. Because that was like where all the black people went, you know what I mean? And, and it was different, so they taught me how to box there. They move, move, just run, just move. And then I went to, then I went to Delgado's. And then I went to, to uh, Sloan's Lake, where they taught me to mature, to be mature. And then I went down to Deep Town, because Deep Town taught me my power. They taught me about power. And then I went to L.A. Boxing, to where I learned how to train people and how to, how to mature in the game. And then I went back to Touch Em Up. Then I went back to Touch Em Up. And I've been there since, and then I got my own place. It sounds like each one of these gyms gave you little bit of the basics yeah. that builds on why you're a professional now. Exactly. That's exciting. So, tell us about one of the boxing matches that is really one of those two. Probably one of the ones I lost. I haven't boxed that many, but... And why would it be one that you lost? Because I learned so much out of that, it, it got me to the point to where I'm at now. Like Jeffrey Sprewell, he I never fought a because my, my amateur career was so short. He uh, he taught me how to. Uh, he was a bully, you know, because he knew I had a right hand, so he just bullied me, you know, just roughed me up, and, and I lost because he roughed me up. That's how I lost. 
And then the, the second time I lost, I fought, I fought against David Marquez. And that was a controversial loss. And uh, and what was the, and what had happened at the end of the ten seconds, he had hit me. And then my trainer Devero at the time, he used to have us look at the waist. So I was looking at his waist, and he was a southpaw, and he threw it, and he threw a straight left. And I and I said, oh, boom! And I got high. The last ten seconds, I was like, boom! That's the first time I ever been high. And I almost I could have been counted out if it was like maybe about twenty seconds, and they could have you know counted me out. But since the bell rang. They were they was good. So, but when I got up, I was high. That was the only time I've been high ever. And and that would be the last time I'd be high. And then, let's see. And then the other two, my body just gave out on me. Have you ever been to the No. No. I just been high. That's it. When did you realize you were really good at boxing? Um, Probably a year ago, because before that it was just it was just more being serious, and I never let myself I never let myself have fun at all. I, I was just too serious. Brad, was there one boxing match that was really memorable to you? Mm. Probably the ones that I lost. I learned so much out of the ones that I thought. Like one, I got, I got high, which was a controversial loss, and then my first loss, I got bullied, and that's stuff that I learned. He was just always on me. He, he was trying to throw me around like a rag doll. See, because the, the trainer that I had before, it was my defense was more movement, so I get moved, get moved, hit, not get hit. And he was just like just bullying me, and I never fought nobody like that because I had a short, I had such a short amateur career, so I never experienced that. And that's how that basically how he beat me, broke me up. Yeah, you know, Brad, we all have losses and wins in our lives. Do you admit you to me when we were talking that you had five losses in a row? What was what do you, what do you attribute to that, and what did you learn from all of that? Well. It, uh, got me off that high horse like I was the best one, even though I didn't have that as much experience and it brought me down back to earth. But those losses, those losses that I did were probably the biggest wins of my life, of my career, because without those losses, I don't think I would have this gym. Because I shot 9-0, and 9-0, oh, and then I, I lose five in a row. You know, people are like, man, what's going on if this is not, this is not below, you know? And then people start, you know, wanting to get more involved, they started doing blood tests on me, you know, seeing what was wrong with me, and then I just, people just fell in love with me to where everybody was like, well, you know, let's give him his own gym, but at the same time, you know, if it wasn't for God, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have never ran into none of these people. Yeah, now I am. I'm hard-headed. <laughs> I'm hard-headed. My grandma used to tell me uh, a hard head makes a soft behind, which is true. You know, I was always hard-headed. I always, always wanted to do my own thing. You know, just like in here, I want to do my own thing. It's just in life, I have to, I have to learn the hard way. You sound like my older son. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you make money in boxing? Yeah. Yeah, you can make money. Especially, uh, like, right now, it's, it's when you go out of state, that's when you make money. When you stay here in town, you have to sell tickets, but selling tickets to me is fun because it's like, it's like the actual money, it's like actual cash because, and, and I, I get to, I have, I get to involve myself with people, you know, so selling tickets is, is a face to face and, and, and it's money too, so yeah, it, it's some good money. How long do you see yourself boxing? For eight more years. Eight years, that's quite a goal. Yeah, yeah, eight more years. And tell me about your the goals that you've set up for yourself in the next couple of years. In the next couple of years, I want to get another. I want to get. I want to go out of state. I want to start going out of state and uh, making that money going out of state. Because the more you, the more you go on the road, the more money you make. The better your records get, the uh, the more better people you fight, and the better opportunities you get for a title. So this year, I'm looking forward to. Um, 
going out of state and gaining more recognition. And then maybe 2012, the end of 2012, 